chasing stars and holding you I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Hello. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, this evening. Slightly uh, lower camera position, so sorry if I <laughs> get distracted because of that. And here we go. Hello, Whitney. How are you? Hi, Claire. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Good. It's all a bit of a okay? rushed evening. I ended up yeah yeah i ended up having like, loads of time but then it um soon soon went by mostly because i got off the bus uh two stops later than usual oh no uh, worries i forgot where i was because i was trying to sort out the pictures for tonight you're still catching up from up. the um from the protest i think right yeah 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 that as well yeah this morning i had a head a headache so i was on the verge of maybe having to cancel but it's it's yeah. not gone too bad this evening and Good. hello po, hey, po. Um, we don't usually uh, get him this early mm -hmm. um but yes yeah, so i'm excited about tonight's um topic let me mm -hmm. just get our images for us um yeah i don't know if you want to introduce yeah. Use that. Sure. Um, my name's Whitney. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, I studied textiles when I was in school. I studied psychology and textiles uh, in school. And then when I left uh, school, and this was back in 1993. So uh, that was 30 years ago, <laughs> which is kind of amazing to me. But um, I worked in the textile industry, in the upholstery textile industry, for a very short period of time. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to tell you today about that very short period of time exposure that I had to the textile industry and kind of like what I learned from it, um, really just the process and how it worked, at least back in 1993, because I can't really speak to how that process works today. So, um, I also follow. No, exactly. I met yeah, that's really interesting for me. Yeah, yeah, I met Claire through SPTV, and um, we became friends, and so that's how I know Claire. I also have a channel at MultiCheck, so and I read uh, court cases, so it's not for everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Whitney's channel is linked in the description of this video, so do go and check that out. Um, I believe I also have a banner for you. Oh, thank you, Claire. Um, nice. Somewhere, there we go. Ah, thank you. So do go and check her out. Um, I will also pop that in the chats as well so then people can hopefully link, uh, click on that. Um, where we chat. Um, there we go. Fabulous. Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much for that intro. I'm always very bad at intro myself. Um, so I'll just say um, my name's Claire, for anyone new, because yes, yeah, since the protests, we've had. Um, a large number of subs new subscribers, which is really mm -hmm. exciting. Um, not far away from 200. So, yes. Yeah, Congratulations. So um, That's all. Awesome. So, yes. Yeah, so, thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. welcome to all our newbies. Um, yeah, this is, apart from 
when I protest. Um, this is kind of our usual our usual chats is kind of clothing related and um yeah i'm the ethical tailor um i am a tailor and we do mostly alterations repairs um within my business and then i also teach sewing skills which has then led to this channel um and some of the videos on here are of my um kind of more in-depth classes for video format um, mm -hmm. I need to get on and video and sort of edit some new ones. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing some new reaction ones. I'm hoping like sort of next week I kind of feel a bit more easing. I feel like all, all over the place with the nights getting darker. Um, yes. And it's just kind of, yeah, it's like normally I'm sort of like, I'm kind of okay sort of still like working. I sort of usually work until mm -hmm. like seven in the evening um yeah. and uh yeah so you know when it's sort of kind of I kind of feel tired but not too bad yes but there's something about then coming home and then doing this that sort of in the summer I kind of feel like I could go on for hours whereas sort of in the winter I'm yeah so I'm kind so of like I'd like yeah and I'd like to sort of maybe yeah. get up earlier to sort of do like an hour stream in the mornings especially for like the clothing love stories but yeah, yeah so I'm not really feeling my feeling my vibe at the moment so I'm hoping over like the next couple of weeks I kind of find that um but yeah so if you kind of like all that please um like the stream if you're watching subscribe if you want to see more and then you can pay a sewing lesson forward for my in-person sewing classes um, which I will be looking, linking with a um, charity so to sort of um, find people suitable for it, but it's going to be aimed at uh, people on low income, mm -hmm. um, potentially only women, but I don't really like to sort of um, segregate in that way because I get a lot of men um, mm -hmm. coming to my classes, so I would like to have it open for everyone. But I'm kind of thinking people on really low income, people looking for jobs and things like that, um, to sort mm -hmm. of give them skills, either to then get a job or to um, just to save them money sort of in the long run. So, uh, yeah, so that is the aim, aim of that. Um, wonderful. So we will take that off because it is a bit distracting. Mm -hmm. um wonderful i just wanted to say hello to lisa as well oh, Lisa, she's just popped in lovely to have you here and um, poe is saying that he um has been to the textile markets in thailand um yes. now i don't know if that was one of the places that you used to visit as well um mm -hmm. so yes yeah, so he says he's well aware of the dark side of mm -hmm. the industry yes. um yeah and and this is like a really interesting topic for me because i love textiles i put a couple of images of some recent purchase textile purchases of okay. my own um so we can sort of talk about talk about potential projects in the end but um yeah. but yes yeah, so having done stuff in the industry for it i've mm. never been in that side so it's really interesting for me to hear kind of um mm -hmm. sort of actual like real life stories of how things were Mm -hmm. um so should i start um bless you um putting the images up they're in order of the email that you sent me or yeah and i'll, I'll just first? yeah i'll just kind of like set the stage yeah it's, yeah yeah it's 1993 um big shoulder pads we're in you know the ones that came uh straight out the colors were very dark um, the, the popular colors. So deep hunter greens, um, deep burgundy colors, deep blues, um, those sorts of things, right? The big, the big movies during that time that came out during that year in 1993 were Jurassic Park, um, Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, Tom Hanks was in two huge movies in that year, um, both Sleepless in Seattle and and in Philadelphia. Yeah. And then Schindler's, Schindler's List was also uh, put out that year as well. So it was a huge kind of movie year, kind of take you back into time. Um, I was working in Chicago and I had just uh, left school. I had gotten married. 
um, and my husband and I moved to Chicago. And my job there was with a a textile company, and I was hired there because I spoke Italian, um, and also because I studied uh, uh, textiles and color in um, when I was in graduate school. Um, so remember back in 1993, we still had um, synthetic fabrics. We had a lot of synthetic fabrics, but they were not quite as nice as they are now. Um, the hand of the synthetics was not as good. It, it still had a kind of a, a plasticky feel to it. Um, and, you know, they, they really have made great advances in that 30 years with things like suedeing of polyester or tensile and things like that. So everything mostly that um, we were buying at that point in time were um, upholstery related uh, uses. Um, so it had to be heavy textile, very durable. Um, these textiles or these um, pieces of fabric were gonna be used to maybe upholster, you know, uh, hotels, <laughs> right? So we needed large, large volumes of, of these textiles. The other thing that was different, and when I I, uh, I worked for this company, I didn't realize how um, necessary it was at that time anyway. And I, this is another thing I'm not sure about is the European market or the, um, the European market and, and what they prefer in upholstery textile, especially in color, is much, much different than it was at that time to the U.S. market. Um, so... Mm -hmm. When we went to Italy, what we were actually doing was we were trying to locate designs of textiles that we liked, um, recolor those textiles for an American market, um, and then we would uh, set up all of the shipping, right? How long that the manufacturing process would take place, um, you know, how... Uh, we had to order a certain quantity because we needed those quantities to fit into full size shipping containers, right? So mm. the large, very, very large shipping containers, right? So that was kind of the process that we were going to do while we were there in Italy. Um, the first the first red flag for this company, and I'm not going to mention the name. I don't know if they're still in business and they might not even be. In, I, I don't know if they're doing business still. Um, they had a very small staff in this company and there were probably only about 25 people who worked for the company, but two of those people were Harvard graduates and lawyers. Um, so I was a little like, my father is a lawyer um, and that kind of raised a little bit of a red flag for me. But I thought possibly, um, you know, the international shipping, the customs, um, the restrictions for, for importing fabrics are pretty, uh, you know, you have to document a lot of things to actually import fabric. And so I thought possibly these lawyers were working for those things, right? Um, so it, the other red flag that I should have known about, and I thought possibly it was just because they, they knew that I spoke Italian. Um, thinking back now, my 25-year-old self should have known I was in Chicago, and there are plenty of people who speak fluent Italian in Chicago. So yeah. <laughs> um, that was another thing that I probably should have picked up on. I probably didn't pick up on when I was that age, right? And, you know, I was... I was very naive. I was raised in a very small town. So um, I believed most things that people said. Anyway, we went to, um, we were going to a textile trade fair in Italy. Uh, the textile trade fair is called Proposte. Um, it had its first textile fair in 1993. And I did not even realize uh, that was the first one of this big fair that goes on in uh, Chernobyl in, uh, in Italy. Mm. The first thing that the company did was they gave me $5,000. And wow. I had to run downtown 
to downtown Chicago to get an emergency passport because I didn't have a passport at that time. And somehow this company got me a passport in three days. I have no idea how <laughs> to this day. I'm not, yeah. I'm not asking any questions. <laughs> so, um, with the money, I went to, uh, I went to, I went shopping. Quite frankly, because I needed to look the <laughs> part. You know, when I was in Italy. Um, so I meet. I think I immediately went to Donna Karen, a Donna Karen store, and just said, "Please put me in anything that's pretty. You know, that looks good." And and I did. I I got a, a few really pretty suits. You know, just to go. Yeah. And then we flew from Chicago to Milan, first class. Wow. Which was another like, wow, this is kind of mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> you know, I had never been in a limo before. Um, I'd never been in first class before, for sure. And I was just getting more and more nervous and anxious, like, oh, my goodness, I really don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I hope I know enough Italian to get through this. And, you know, yeah. I've never really you know, spoken Italian to a real Italian before. So I don't even know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we got there and we stayed in the, in, in a place called Vildest, which is um, 16th century palace that was built wow. um, for royalty. So nice. Yeah. That was crazy. And I was just really kind of gobsmacked the whole time. You know, I'm like, I love architecture. So I'm like looking at everything and trying to soak everything up. And so I was really pretty overwhelmed. And we went to the textile fair, I believe all, I think it was either three or four days. Um, and we went to all of the different fairs. We did a lot of just browsing textiles, looking at the fabrics and things like that mm -hmm. and really just trying to pinpoint patterns um, that that would work for the United States and we did a lot of these and and basically we you know after that show that trade fair show wrapped up um, and and if you'd like to you can show just a picture of the trade floor right what it, it kind of looks like this is a uh, a recent photo from um, proposte but um, no, yeah, these no. are some of the, yes. yeah, sorry, so, I'm like, yeah, no, um, okay. oh no, did I not? Yeah, keep going. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, I didn't, uh, <laughs> no, I don't think I did that one. Oh, I think it's the um, thumbnail. Okay, never mind. That's good. Scales. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I didn't think to do it again. That's um, okay. Um, but you know, after that, we um, we did, we went and visited specific mills. So we kind of identified the fabrics we were interested in. Um, we identified the different mills that we wanted to go to. You know, we kind of organized them by where they were in their proximity to Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. Some of these mills, we, we, we drove quite a ways away to go and visit the, the mill maker or the, the mill, um, you know, the, the foreman. And then we would talk with them about, um, you know, the different dye lots that they could produce and things like that. Now, most of the textile makers that we spoke to at that time were not large manufacturers. And, and what this means, or, I, or what I found it out to be, was the mills were actually there to... Um, to bring in the fabric after it was completed, right? And to put it onto mm. the bolts and to make it um, uh, ready to ship. Um, but the, the actual fabric was being woven by what were called at that time, garage weavers. And basically these are people who had looms, a single loom set up um, in their garage and they would, uh, basically set up the loom and then then do all of the, the looming themselves. Sometimes they would even do the dyeing of the textiles as well. Um, oh, interesting. Yes. 
So you can probably imagine um, you have a decentralized network of all of these um, weavers, right, in place. They're hand making these um, pieces of textile. And the dye lots, they might be all over the place, right? Which could be bad for a hotel when they're trying to do a seam on an upholstery piece and those two dye lots are completely off from each other, right? So, so color has always been a very, very important thing in textiles, right? I was lucky when I was in Italy, quite frankly, because almost all of the um, textiles that we were looking at at that time. Oh, yes. Yes. There. Now, this is a photo. So, sorry. From, not to from put the you off. Yeah. One. That's what we were talking yeah. about before. But this is kind of this is almost mm -hmm. exactly what it would look like. Um, and you can see all of the different fabrics are there and you can touch the hand. You can see how stiff they are, how tightly they are woven together. Um, but probably almost all of those are still 100% cotton fiber, right? Um, mm -hmm. There might be some synthetic ro woven in there. Um, cotton seems to be really the best uh, upholstery fabric, I believe, because it wears quite nicely and evenly and, and it keeps the dye very consistently. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. so it was actually good that I was doing... Um, these color these color changes on just pure cotton which is very color fast in most cases yeah so color fastness is is a is a great concept right what is color fastness and and what does it mean um color fastness is the length of time quite frankly that the color will stay uh in the the fabric itself or in the fiber itself mm. and so cotton natural fibers like wool and in cotton and you know even things like linen can they need to be uh woven together uh, before they can be dyed or sometimes they they can be um they can be dyed prior to being spun um, that happens as well, but it's also it's it's usually more consistent to dye the cotton when it's in a yarn uh, when it's in a yarn, um, mm. or it, that's how I've seen it done before. And really, what what would happen would be the garage weavers would just have huge um, ropes, you know, or, or coils of of cotton, and then just put them into different buckets, right? To get, yeah, um, yeah, I've seen that. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, very, very, very much uh, matching by eye, color matching, mm -hmm. and things like that. And the eye can be tricked quite easily <laughs> with color. So, <laughs> um, so there was a lot of 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 a lot of things that we needed to discuss. A lot of types of um, questions that we had about when the when the dye would be in, you know, put upon the the, fa the fibers itself, um, you know, what the cost of those dyes would be, because some of these dyes, especially the very, very deep, um, vibrant dyes are very expensive. Um, mm. And the, the reason why the dyeing for, for those cottons is, is so important is because, um, you know, these are the places where these beautiful tapestries came from you know this is Italy and and uh, you know to keep themselves cold and or to keep themselves warm in their castles they would hang tapestries on the wall and things like that things that were fabric yeah so you know it's a very traditional uh, sort of thing there so it's nice mm -hmm. um, I'm also glad that we did we stayed with cotton there because the 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 dyeing of synthetics is is a whole it's a whole nother thing, right? That dyeing in, of synthetics yes. and color fastness is, is really a, a complex problem. And thank goodness for, for cotton. <laughs> That's what I, I yeah, said. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now we would also have, um, 
you know, we would we would go and we would look at these these big bolts of, of fabric and we would look at them and and sometimes we would need to change the design itself as well. And and I didn't like changing the design itself, um, but we did a lot of novelty prints, which is annoying. Mm-hmm. I know it's this is a probably United States thing. I'm not sure, you know, but we would do, um, you know, upholstery for golfers and upholstery for <laughs> just novelty type upholsteries and they would be very specific. So we would create the tapestries or the jackards with a very specific design. Yeah. So, nice. so that was, that was very fun. Um, a fabric bolt. So I can show you a piece of fabric. This is not from Italy, by the way. Um, but uh, Poe might, this might be familiar to Poe, but this is a piece of fabric. It's, <laughs> This is an iPod fabric. Ah, uh, oh yeah. And um, you can see the the selvage, like the along the edges mm. here, right? This is where the the need the hooks would have um, kept your your uh, what is it weft your weft threads, mm. right? And then yeah, I like your diagram that you've done for that because I yes. always forget. Which yeah, you can show the diagram. <laughs> but yeah. So this bolt is, um, yeah, the, if you want to go to the diagram. Yeah, so the other thing that we would talk incessantly about in Italy while I was there was warp and weft. Um, yeah. Hugely important, uh, for especially for, for hand loomers, warp and weft. Um, so the salvage, you can see the salvage side is along the warp, and this is the salvage mm-hmm. side, this this part here, and then uh, you know the fabric on the loom would 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 be coming this direction this way, right? So yeah, yeah. and this is weft. Yeah, yes. weft to left. So I weft like to the left. That's how I remember it. <laughs> so. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And then if you'd like, you can show the loom um, or one of the looms. Yeah, I was going to say, then we've got this Now, this is a loom. Is a loom yeah, this there. is a hand loom. Yeah. But, but then this is a mechanical one. Yes, this is a mechanical one. And this, this type of mechanical loom is extremely fast. Um, but it cannot do complex types of... Uh, patterns um for instance mm. tapestry it could not do tapestries things like that um but actually what's happening here is is each one of these rollers is acting like its own loom um it, whereas oh. a hand loom would just have one 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 roller one uh tamp down rod right or or breaker mm. um these would have uh three or four that would be working all in in tandem it's very important that these all work in tandem, right? Because the the thread just to the bottom needs to be different than the thread up and up, and they form this pattern as they stack, mm. right? So, so if we can go, go to, to the yeah, the go to the one. larger this hand loom. Oh, this is an interesting uh, one too. Let's let's go back to the so, one. so just as this one, yeah. Yes. Now this is a hand loom and. If you can zoom out on the photo a little bit, you can see kind of the whole uh, apparatus. I don't know how I do that. Oh, okay. I think that's like when people have, um, or maybe we can, yeah. Maybe no. the, there's oh, a no, second, there's a second one, um, I think, where you can um, see it. From the, oh, yeah, from yes, the front, this, this one. one. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you have to now have you like can a kind of screen to do the whole zooming in and out. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. No worries. So here you can see lots of threads, right? Lots of yarn mm. going everywhere. Tension is a very important. So you see these rods, um, these these flat uh, pieces that are kind of the thread is woven in between those. Those are tensions, mm. right? And then as this fabric is being woven, you know, these, these, um, 
these yarns will just travel slowly up to the, the loom where there's a shuttle flying back and forth. Um, and then every time the shuttle flies one way and then another, the, the loomer will, will pull down on the, will pull down on the, uh, the board just to tamp it, to tamp it into place. Right. Yeah. So lots of things in play, right? Yarn tension, the tamp down of the, uh, the loomer, because you can get, uh, you know, inconsistent um, thread counts within a, oh, within a yeah. given, you know. Um, but also there has to be tension as, as the fabric is being rolled down and, and into place onto a bolt as well, right? So all kinds of tension coming all different directions in this, in this picture, but you can see how it's a, a very intricate process. Mm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then I think there was a. Um, oh no, they were just my That's ones. That's um, Now this. So yeah. So then. Oh no, sorry. I was going to show, and then this is in the one from the other side, and yes. that um, uh, is the shuttle that you can see on top of the. Yes. Uh, material being formed. Yes. Mm hmm. But you can see each one of those little threads, um, they have to stay in that position. And uh, yeah. really there's that board has uh, kind of like just pins that keep, you know, you can kind of see even with the, the, the tension on the backside, right? There's, there's threads coming down and, and intersecting, yeah. in, intersecting with the, the threads coming in uh, at warp, right? So yeah, very uh, complex process. And could you imagine that 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 mechanicals uh, that mechanical uh, weaver that we just saw can do this process three times at the same time, right? So you can see where yeah, exactly, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to think that yeah, if we can go to the banded linen uh, one, yes, I can show that uh, one. This one. Yeah, now talk about complex, right? Look at the loom on this one. These are actually, this is one very large loom, but if you see along the bottom where the people are, you can see the bolts of fabric being being formed right. there, right? So that's yeah. where that fabric is, is coming in. Because the fabric is banded, it needs just an extra little process. It's probably just one cross weave in, but it creates this banding effect on the fabric, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there's probably underneath this platform, there are other, um, you know, reciprocal areas of threads, but those are not being treated. Just the ones that you can see here visible are. Yeah. Right? It's really interesting, but the shuttles there would fly back and forth. This is for linen. So linen is a, is a different, um, it's, linen is more difficult to dye. And it's also more difficult to stay straight, <laughs> to stay, to keep up. I never realized it was so difficult to dye. Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult. It's got a, it, it's, it's natural properties of keeping you mm. warm and things like that. It kind of makes it a little bit more tricky to dye. It's a little bit more slippery on its surface. Yeah. Ah, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so I, had some, I grew some flax in my parents' garden once. Oh, yeah. Uh, to yes. sort of have a go at kind of um, bashing it down and sort of making yes. it. And then end up doing anything with it because uh, it was at a time that I was uh, coming down to London. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I sort of kind of then didn't really have the time to um, kind of harvest it and things like that all at the right, right. time. But, um, but yeah, it was really sort of fascinating sort of yeah. when I did sort of dry some out to sort of, yeah, do all that. Yeah. And what so is fascinating fun. about that is it you, real, you start to realize how much of that plant material you would need to make mm -hmm. any. It, it's it's quite a lot. Right. It's a great fiber, but um, the processing of it, 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 it takes a lot of work. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. 
there's actually there's a film that I keep meaning to um sort of kind of produce that song here, but called the Nettle Dress. So if anyone oh. um kind of Googles that, it's really, really fascinating uh guy from England. He um he like he went around and he harvested nettles and it was all like during a period that his wife was very ill and things like that. And then uh, the outcome, he like filmed the whole process and he um, weaved himself his own mm. nettle cloth um, and then made a dress for his daughter out of it, which was like really beautiful. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was fascinating like, seeing the whole seeing the whole process. Yeah, they've been doing some um online showings of it, so do do check it out. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah, I will. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, right. So yeah, so... Do you want me to uh go on to a different image at all? Yeah, let's go to those um the color paths, I guess we can look at, yeah. right? Um, um, yeah, just those Google pages, yeah, there or maybe, go. yeah, we might be able to. We can show the shipping container one as well, just oh, real yeah, briefly. I'm sorry. Have, um, that was no, 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 that was one that I realized that I missed out as well. Oh, that's okay, because that's no worries. It was really annoying. My um, when I was down, I've had to like download each individual image separately oh. and um that's okay oh yeah where's that one even gone oh because it's there oh no sorry i've lost that one no uh -huh. worries no but worries i think people imagine know. a shipping container <laughs> yeah. yeah i think you know how you know those big shipping containers are all of the bolts of fabrics that we were ordering were anywhere between uh 40 inches I think to out to a hundred inches. I think it just completely depended on if we wanted it to be um, a, a curtain fabric or an upholstery fabric. Um, and then sometimes we would need the same pattern in like upholstery or maybe a, a lighter curtain weave, right? Something yeah. that was not as dense. Yeah. Um, so that would happen sometimes, but we would then ship those um, on shipping containers back to the U.S. And I was responsible for making sure that we had to do um, all of the different um, uh, sourcing, right? So where the, the cotton had come from, where the dyes had come from, and then country of origin and things like that, where it was uh, assembled. So... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, things would usually come in quite easily. Um, but to give you an idea of the types of fabrics we were looking at, uh, like, again, I was I was kind of saying 1993, it was uh, dark colors were very, uh, were kind of in. It was very, it was almost kind of an elegant or uh, uh, kind of era. Um, and you can see here, there's, there's some damask uh, tapestry, um, some medallion. Uh, medallion type uh, fabric. Those were, were really, really very popular. Um, even this little needlepoint looking tapestry. I, I was talking about yeah. the novel prints, yeah, that we would do. And there were a lot of, it was just amazing how um, people would love these novel prints of, uh, you know, things like cupids or, 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 you know, just like kind of pastoral landscapes, things like that. Mm. Um, Southwestern was coming in a little bit. So we, we would also have some of these more Southwestern flair types of looking fabrics as well, which was completely foreign to them in, um, in Europe. Right. So yeah. <laughs> we would, we would sometimes look at a, at maybe more abstract patterns and say, oh, we could, maybe we could do this for a Southwest version of this pattern. Right. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. That's all right. And then, yeah, you can see the vintage yeah, tapestry. Things. Yeah, you can see where that quarter. We would do that quite a bit, measuring with a quarter. Yeah. yeah. And then also with this this um, 
this tapestry is just beautiful. This rustic wildlife. Uh, I think that is my favorite uh, type of, of weaving is these mm. really beautiful tonal shadings, right? Um, there's no, there's not a lot of color in that, in that uh, textile, except for that bluish green color, but there's so much art there. It's just a beautiful piece of fabric. Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. They're my faves yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yes, like the the phoenix in the in the tree, you know, those are kind of novel. Mm. Like the moose and the bear, you know. Yeah. Those were the types of things that we we would get. It's it's really interesting. It's it's funny how you know fashions change, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, those sort of patchwork ones, we don't, I've never seen those sort of ones right. here, but I have had some African ones where they're sort of like, um, like hand printed and things, and they're often yes. built up in that sort of way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, our kind of novelty ones will be like cartoon characters and mm -hmm. yes. all sort of, you know, like you stand like Christmas and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's not just yeah. the US. <laughs> And I thought it was interesting because the European markets, like um, they, they prefer color palettes or color. I'm sorry, this is back in 1993. Okay. I can't say that's true today, but in that era, I think the European market liked, they preferred very, very light colored fabrics, beiges, mm. whites, very clean looking, um, a little bit of Miami Vice colors in there, right? The pinks and the teals and the this very happy light tones, right? And the American market was just so different at, at that point in time um, that we we had to recolor just about everything to a darker a darker wow. path. It was it was strange? <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like that anymore. To, I think with the advent of the internet and communication is much more uh, easy, you know, much easier. Uh, I kind of think we all start to get maybe the same fashion sense, you know. Yeah, we're not so separated anymore. Yeah. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened well, was nice. we were we were there for for two weeks and. It was a fantastic time. I met lots of people that were just beautiful, beautiful people to be with. Um, the Italians love to have lunch and, and drink wine with their lunch. I was only 25 years old, so I did my mm. best. I, I did the best I could. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Yeah, it was very nice. We had a great time while we were there. And then when we came back, um, I, I started to realize that there was some, um, copyright infringement happening on design. Ah. And that's when I kind of thought that must be why there's two Harvard educated lawyers on staff mm. um, because copyright infringement, um, design infringement is a, is a very subjective thing. So if I I caught the whiff that maybe this company was doing some um, maybe some copying of exclusivity rights and things like that. So interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I left and went to another company at that time. But it was a very interesting experience. And it makes me sort of wonder if they chose me to go because I was I was very naive. I was very um you know, I was not a worldly a worldly person at that point in time. I was, I was pretty naive. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the story. Um, no, it was that. I think I, 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 I never. Know. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just going to say that um, when I was working somewhere and uh, sort of just before I went like, full time in my business. And uh, yeah, and they had a lawyer and it was like really random because it's like, it's not yeah. often you're in sort of uh, 
a place and you sort of like get to know the lawyers almost and you're just like right. yeah, what's going on yeah there? and there were a few yeah. times when we were there at at the fair um you know the textile fair where there were exclusivity um rights being given to certain textiles um and the, the companies that, that were getting those mm. exclusivity rights were very large American um, furniture manufacturers, quite frankly. Um, so I, I, I started to have the feeling that perhaps maybe not everything was on the up and up with this company, but I didn't stick around to, to make sure or to see or to see or anything like that. But yeah. <laughs> the, that whole, um, design copy um it is disturbing it's very much like um it's very similar to to taking other people's music and claiming that as your own and things like that um textiles is a, is a, an extremely labor intensive art <laughs> so i think it's mm. a shame when anybody who creates you know things like that that are so pretty that they would have that work taken from them or taken advantage of right so i think it's indeed, important indeed. to realize yeah the work that goes into the, the clothing yeah yeah exactly and it's hard because like i know with clothing manufacturer clothing yeah. manufacturer and design um there has to be now it might have gone up more recently but i know sort of like a few years ago it was someone told me it was like 10 changes you had to make to a garment yes. um in order to sort of like kind of produce it again yeah. um whereas i feel like in textiles there isn't that um right. mm -hmm. kind of uh safeguarding behind it um right. yeah which is like such a shame when you think of sort of uh, like you say you know sort of how much effort people can put in and actually I uh, had someone come for a class yesterday who said she's a textile designer uh, mm. uh, she's a graphic designer sorry and mm. she de had McQueen uh, had the London McQueen the company um, approach her over lockdown about doing some having some graphics she did them and they were like oh you know we're not sure about them and she's oh. like, well, like, you know what my work's like. Right. Then they said, can we just take uh, some photo, like some sort of copies of your Instagram page? Yeah. And she's like, so like, you know, what does that mean? Like, do you own my Instagram page, blah, 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 because obviously they put in the contract that whatever she produces, they then own. Yeah. And they were like, no, 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 it's not like that. And then apparently sort of... It, nothing really got used but she did get paid in the end um, oh, good. but yeah it's just like it's it's a nightmare sort of yeah to um sort of gain control of kind of what you what you do really yes and especially with textiles it's um you can change you know uh, especially if it's a blend right you can you can change like a, a one percentage point and then claim that it's a different fabric because of you know, there's less synthetic in it or something like that, right? Right. Yeah. There are also, there are also lots of laws that we were not uh, impacted by very much in 1993, but there are now laws about, you know, fire uh, retardant in fabrics mm. or, you know, there's different sorts of things like that that are now have to be thought of as well, which just adds expense to those textiles and, yeah makes them in a lot of ways it makes them easier to knock off if they don't have those extra you know little things in there right so. and that's the thing yeah that's why like you got to be really careful kind of when your um say like sort of like buying stuff to make for like sort of like kids wearing and things like that right. or sort of yeah upholstery and things to make sure that it's got all that um certification because Mm -hmm. otherwise you know sort of anything can kind of happen to um those that are in them you know it's sort of yes. all it takes is kind of uh to kind of go near a flame sometimes and it can sort of settle 
all your life absolutely depending on what's, what it's made up of yeah and I think that was another thing that I was you know looking back glad I, I was uh working with with cotton right because the the flammability mm. and the synthetics uh those properties are very very different especially when weaving because mm. uh, the tension of a synthetic yarn and the tension of a cotton or wool fiber is very different you can't pull you know it's the tension is very different so so yeah i mean that's kind of what i wanted to present and if you have any ah. questions or comments um i know that you're yeah you've had a, a long day so <laughs> yeah i apologize for my my yawning at the end there it's uh Suddenly, I'm like sitting down, and it's all suddenly came come catching up on me. Oh. Um, but yeah, if anyone uh, watching has got any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, but yeah, I suppose um, not really sort of questions, but sort of um, discussions around mm -hmm. um, sort of like dyeing processes and things like that. Right. Do you know? Um, if they sort of like kind of if they were sort of natural um dyeing yeah. processes or if that was sort of chemical based it was chemical based as far as i know and um mm -hmm. the dyeing see there's this very fine line that you walk i feel like anyway with the the mills because they don't want to tell you too much about how they make something mm -hmm. um especially you know, if there's a particular color that they're using that everybody's a little bit like, where'd you get that color? Right. So they're very, yeah, at that time, anyway, they were very um, reluctant to really give a lot of information. And that was the other thing, too, is we always went to the main mill where they had their offices and stuff. We were really never, um, I, I think I asked maybe five or six times different people. Can we see your mill? And they would be like, Oh no, it's just different people. So, you know, sometimes uh, buyers don't have access to that information and that can be a little mm. distressing. You, you're not really quite sure to how to take that. Um, but I also understand why they're being secretive because they have quite a few trade secrets that they want to protect. So yeah yeah that's the thing yeah that's something that i know from kind of being part of like fashion revolution and things like that yeah. is um they have this like transparency um uh what do they call it um transparency report i think is what it's called yeah. um uh where they sort of um list like all the all the sort of um brands out there because it's obviously mostly around uh like clothing manufacture but then it's also sort of um so there's like questions about sort of where they get their stuff made mm -hmm. um then going into sort of like kind of the textiles and the mills and things like that mm -hmm. um dyeing processes um all the yes. way through to um shop floor kind of thing and yes. then they get like um scored sort of depending what they've they've given so there's like a transparency score as to um how much they have disclosed and then like an overall sustain or yeah or, or just a sustainability score i think like this or two yes and then they get like an overall from that um That's yeah and it's very surprising sort of like over the years how many brands still don't disclose a lot of the stuff yes. um but yeah like you say sort of it's not or even always the brands won't disclose it. Sometimes it's the mills and the manufacturing factories. Um, yes. The, yeah, sort of don't want to disclose as well. But from what I've seen when I've gone to um, some sort of like more like sustainable textile fairs is mm -hmm. that there are a lot more that are disclosing um, mm -hmm. and sort of understand the need to um because i think sort of where like the fashion industry goes back like a long you know like a fairly long time anyway mm -hmm. um the uh 
that sort of they have these sort of practices of being in there from the start of sort of being yes. very secretive. Yes. Um, because yeah. that was the way that like people didn't copy what you did. Whereas now it's seen like uh, if you don't disclose, then sort of like what are you hiding in exactly. terms of like the bad practices? So I think right. there's a lot more um, of the factories are sort of like understanding that that's sort of the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. And if they're not, then those sort of workers are leaving and becoming more independent. Um, right. But obviously, yeah, then that, that also uh, leads to some difficulty in transparency of sort of um, yeah. uh, locating <laughs> yeah. said workers. Yeah, but I, I and I'm not even sure that that type of garage weaving that was being done 30 years ago is is still a thing. You know, the. Right the um, advancements just in looms and just in fabric, right. Alone mm -hmm. yarn have been amazing. So I wonder if there's even more secrets now, or if there's more transparency now, it, it seemed very secretive back in the nineties. Um, and it's, it's great yeah. to hear that, that transparency is something that the fashion industry is hopefully looking for, you know, looking at. Yeah, yes. yeah, we're mm -hmm. demanding it anyway. But yeah, Absolutely. I know definitely within the dying, there's a lot of secrecy because there's like some people I haven't seen them do much for a while, but they were like following um down the rivers um mm -hmm. to see like where the factories were or like the dye houses, I suppose they're called, um, would uh sort of excrete their yes. Um, the runoff. sort of like yeah. used dyes yeah into this river that people yeah. were bathing in you know so this is in India um, yeah. but then that the same happens in China and things like that um, and uh, yeah so they were going around and like plugging up these um, drains but obviously you know that's dangerous in itself because it's all chemicals and things yeah, um, yeah. and only lasts for so long because then that like, they would go along and then it'd be sort of kind of where they had plugged would have been sort of unplugged and things like that mm -hmm. um and it's just so hard because there's nothing um being done in these countries to sort of as like, in like laws and things like that to make change Yes. Um, so it's just sort of like uh, independent people having to sort of hold them yeah. up to it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Yes, I but, think we, we need to demand more accountability for the people who produce clothing. Um, because, you know, fashion is, it can be taken in ridiculous ways. Mm. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and be quite you know over consuming and, and very gluttonous and and I think that you know maybe fashion needs to to have some practicality to it as well right? <laughs> you know why not exactly <laughs> there you go definitely definitely um and also sort of um like I was listening to a podcast today and they were talking about how we need to get into the habit of recycling um, sort of like the uh, polyester and things, textiles, back into textiles. Yes. Rather yes. than like water bottles, <laughs> you know, like plastic yes. water bottles, because they should be put back into being water bottles and then fabric, because that's the trouble is that sort of you, um, like you use recycled sort of like plastic bottles to make cloth, but then nothing is then being done with that cloth afterwards because it is said that nothing can be made from again from, from that cloth. Right. But it's sort of equally it's the fact that they're not trying, you know, like sort of they're not putting exactly. the effort to find ways to do it. Because, right. oh, because we've got all these plastic bottles and that feels really good to recycle and then mm -hmm. reuse rather than... Um, you know, understanding that then it's sort of like this still, because even to use plastic bottles, you still, I think for cloth, you still have to use like a percentage of um, new plastic. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. um whereas like if they just turn them back into water bottles and they wouldn't need that um as I far see. As I'm aware anyway. so maybe um, they think it has longer li longevity uh as a water bottle <laughs> i i don't know and I, that's to be honest, i think i think yeah. it's the plastic companies yes you know making that thing yeah. more you know they're making themselves more relevant because i also saw a, a program ages ago now about um uh, these like plastic factories in I think they were in Scotland um, and they had just expanded just when like all this talk about oh like banging plastic bags and banging you know all these yeah. sort of like sort of single-use plastics and it's like but we're expanding and it's like yeah you know like, how are they gonna sort of weave that in so then that's how they're doing it you know it's like well you can recycle but like you'll always need a little bit more um yes. whereas i'm sure if someone sort of just uh concentrating on sort of how to recycle only sort of only recycle and not use any new then i'm sure you know it will it would uh be done because obviously they're doing it um with um like natural fibers more and more yes. especially sort of uh cotton from um jeans and things like that you know for ages that couldn't be done 100 percent recycled because the fibers were right. too short and now it's gotten up i think it's like um 70 to 80 percent recycled cotton now whereas mm -hmm. it was only like 40 percent or something before yes. so you know we're mm -hmm. getting there yeah that's um, good. so yes yeah, so the other thing too is process. With with synthetic fabrics, many, many times the dye is inserted into the fabric or into the fiber um, when when the fiber is actually being formed or extruded or, or however oh. it's being formed, right? So Interesting. the dye is almost an integral part to the to the yarn itself, right? And mm. that makes it tricky to recycle um oh i'm sorry yeah definitely yeah. uh whereas something like cotton or wool in theory can be bleached that color can be removed it's not part of the the molecular makeup of the of the thread right yeah exactly so it is tricky yes yeah yeah, yeah definitely and actually it's um one thing when i was at uni i did uh, my work experience at ghost um, if you know that company, but um, they were like in house, they would make everything for the catwalk and sort of like samples and things like that for shops. And um, they so they make them up into the garments, then they dye them. And they yeah. had a lady there who, um, yeah, would like sort of do everything by by eye, and I always sort of um would kind of have me in sort of awe of like you know who could ever sort of do her job again because she just seemed to yeah just like instantly sort of know how much of everything to sort of put in right. it, was, it was really interesting to see like she was but cooking then, a recipe but it was for it, <laughs> literally <laughs> literally but then now like being uh well like since sort of doing alterations i learned it um when i was first at selfridges is that then you've got to be careful when you're altering as to yeah. how the garment was put together and when it was dyed, especially with chinos that do it down in that white yes. as well, that you one pick a stitching and then it's like the white um, fabric <laughs> underneath that stitching. Yes. So, um, yeah, so it's sort of, it's really like interesting like seeing all these things and like the tailors would, because then they got um, ghosts back at Selfridges during my time there. And the tailors would be like, her horrified, be like, oh, it's this cheaper brand. And I'm <laughs> like, no, like that's sort of their like unique thing is that it's all this sort of hand dyed and thing. Um, yes. Yeah, but they, they like couldn't get over it. They were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, it was it was quite nice for me because I was like sort of teaching everyone else. I was like, right, you know, this is what they do with them. So just be, be aware of what you need to alter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Head up. Head, heads up. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, fabulous. Well, that's uh, yeah. Unless you sort of want to add anything else, no, no questions so far. No, so I, I can talk to you about these fabulous. Yeah, that I've yeah. got. Um, because I thought that you would like them, especially with these ones with the waving me if we can catch up so i'll start with these ones first yes so um the one with the black and white and the yellow um mm -hmm. that is a, a weave um mm -hmm. fabric that i found and That's i'm thinking beautiful. to make some trousers out of them oh um but yeah i really like it it's like a nice um uh, I like matte, that. um finish to it yeah yeah I like the geometric shape it's really interesting pattern it's nice exactly yeah yeah and I usually get sort of these um sort of more colorful ones from the shop um yes. when I have before but yeah like I saw this one and I was like oh that, that's really sort of different and uh, it is cool yeah 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 exactly and i was like you know the one thing that i need like for sort of autumn winter is some um some sort of trousers but i mm -hmm. thought sort of in this fabric it would probably be quite good all year round <laughs> and then the um the more vibrant color is a really um interesting it doesn't really show up as well on the photo but it's like um bright luminous pinks <laughs> neat um, i like it you yeah, can see exactly. the tune on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this one is a shiny one. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they they was ten pounds off because obviously it's a summer fabric. But yeah, I saw that and I was like, I need to make a skirt out of that. <laughs> cute, cute. Thank you. I like those. And then these are ones that I got delivered um today. These were cotton. Actually, no the sort of bugs is a cotton and the other one is a linen oh um, yes but the bugs are literally that big like i was i was kind of expecting them like sort of small they yeah. so, oh uh, yeah so i, I was love like them. i love it i love it They're so yeah so, um, uh, i'm thinking of making some sort of dress out of that <laughs> but yeah, I was like, that's definitely I've got to, I've got to watch for my pattern placement on that. Yeah, <laughs> don't be <with> too folks. <laughs> and you can um, you can kind of you can tell the linen right because mm, you see the slabs. Yes, it's a very flat. You know the 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 print on it is very very crisp, and that's what I love about mm. linen. It does not bleed at all with with any print it's just a beautiful fabric and then you can also see the warp weft a little bit in in the uh in the white of the flower right it's yeah beautiful. exactly it's a beautiful fabric yeah yeah so i just thought they were yeah quite quite fun mm -hmm. um and then i also got like a a massive bag i didn't realize quite how much it was going to be i think i got like 10 kilo or something it was like 20 quid so not much um but yeah I've got I've been asked to do some workshops over Christmas so I was like oh I'll kind of just get like a load like that um that but yeah I got like so much and actually there's a really really nice one in there I didn't uh, manage to get a photo of it but that's like kind of a it's a massive piece of fabric and it's got like a geometric sort of pattern like halfway through and then it's got um like some sort of flower i think with it as well but yeah it's really interesting they're sort of um kind of separate but it works really well so oh neat. Yeah, we will yeah we will yeah, really I'm, see how that goes i think with this i'm going to i don't know i might use it if I double it, I might use it to upholster an ottoman, but I'd like it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, that would look beautiful. So, Is that one that you've got recent that you've been having a in your friend, a, Yeah, a friend of mine sent this to me from Bali. I just wanted oh, some. Lovely. 
I wanted some um, authentic icon. So yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, May is saying, I know nothing about fabric, but I'm learning. I hope uh, I hope we uh, explained it explained it well enough. I hope so. Um but yeah, I think if um you've got nothing else to say, we can end it on that. Okay. Well thank you, Claire. Um, I appreciate I appreciate hanging out with right. you. Thank you too. <laughs> Um, I apologize that I'm so sleepy this week and my throat is like it's like really weird because I don't feel um that it's kind of strenuous or anything but I can really hear it when I'm when I'm talking so uh, yeah I well you that. you guys uh really that was a huge effort <laughs> put out on your part last weekend so I'm not surprised so thank you so much I I thought possibly we would not hear from Alex uh, this week at all because his voice sounded like it was going as well but you guys did a great yeah. job yeah yeah exactly yeah when I heard him on um Chris Shelton last night I was like oh my god <laughs> take it take a day because yeah I know like Monday he said like he had a bunch of kind of pressy uh, radio interview things oh and yeah. then yesterday he was working all day um and and then him and Jeff are having a bit of um, fun sort of the end of this week before he um, oh, goes good. home. So, yeah, that would be all nice. That sounds great. Just, um, yeah, exactly. It's just so funny because, like, I keep getting, like, weirdly, weirdly paranoid about, like, things every now and then. Like, I had um, some random uh, WhatsApp text messages from someone. And, uh, and like, saying that they were in the UK, but it was a plus one number. And I was like, I like text him. I was like, should I be worried about this? He's like, no, I get like them all the time. And I was like, okay, because I, I do too. But like, it just yeah. seems to be a bit odd. Um, well, just keep so track yeah. of those little odd things. And yeah, if exactly. they, you know, yeah. So, but you did, you did a great job. I did want to ask, yeah, where it. is that um, painting that you had during the protest? Um, I think it was the one of little Navy baby Davy. Oh, in the fire. Yes. Let Where's me, that? I'll show you. You could auction it off. Um, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Whoops. Oh, yeah. I love um, that painting. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Sorry about that. Grab okay. my headphones and uh, everything else went off. So this is him. Yeah. I love I it. Um, I didn't have him out that much because I think um it was going a little bit off of Alex's uh, being nice, being nice yeah. strategy, but but I did think he was fun. Um, yes, yeah. I just wanted to let you know that that was a that was a beautiful thing, and I remember it from the weekend. The the oh, protest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, it was so nice, like seeing, um, sort of like in here, and like so many people sort of like support for it and everything. And um oh yeah, Maya says uh that um she feels like she's been shouting all weekend. <laughs> yeah, a few people it's saying May and I go were, around there. We were marching yeah. in our living room. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it will be um it will be really nice. Oh Lisa says she has no voice. But uh you did amazing on Friday as well, um, but uh, but yeah, sort of like it's so funny that like, people in the in our little WhatsApp group chat because um, Alex said that he was going to disband it um, after a couple of days, and everyone's been like mad, sort of like who wants to be in another group? Because <laughs> um, obviously there's uh, there's sort of like potential like Osa Osa in this other right. one, um, yeah, and then people 
organizing for another sort of like protest and that um sort of soon and i'm like oh my god i don't go what so when, when i did free bringing because it's like obviously like i did like sort of two days of this free day free yes. bringing was like we would do a protest every sort of like couple of months <laughs> like, yes maybe yeah. just like even not like a daily months. yeah you know whereas i can be like i've done like two or two, two in a weekend um and uh, uh and then i'm doing um another separate one on saturday oh. for a, a different a different culty organization that's uh nice. yeah, i found out about through this one and um but yeah so i'm just like i need like give me after <laughs> christmas <laughs> yeah. no protesting for a while get your well you did a great job you did a great job yeah oh thank you so much <laughs> yeah and lisa has said that she has learned so much tonight i'm so pleased oh. thank you you whitney this was uh this was your topic you did very very well and let me put up our little bangers again. So if you would like to I'll hop over to Witness, uh, Witness's channel and um oh, I always call you Witness, Whitney's channel. Um okay. and mm -hmm. subscribe to her stuff. That would be amazing. Thank um, you. And sort of check out her court documents that she's uh, been going through um and then uh, you can uh when you're watching this you can um if you wouldn't mind liking um this stream and then you can subscribe to me if you like this kind of stuff and you can pay to get me off of the uh stream yard duck emoji <laughs> <laughs> um if you wouldn't if you uh wouldn't mind um that's on my wish list you can also pay a sewing lesson forward to someone who can't otherwise afford it um and you can also buy me a cup of tea if you so wish as well um so yeah thank you all so much for being here and um oh bless me <laughs> protest <laughs> queen oh dang <laughs> i love that but <laughs> That, that's where my imposter syndrome comes from <laughs> um so yeah thank you all so much for uh watching and thank you whitney for being here with me thank <laughs> you um, bye -bye. we will see you later i will kick you out so that you can get on right fabulous thank you all so much